Hey, welcome to part one in this security series. So to begin, we're going to ask the question, what exactly is security? Now, security in a definition is the state of being protected or safe. So now in our case, we want to learn web security because security is just a general term, but web security is a very specific term that uh, only covers website security. Now, why would you want to secure your website? You may ask, well, because websites are very public. So once you put your website online, anybody can view your website, which means a website is just like a door to your house that is open to everyone, or you can say, uh, a house that is open to the general public. Anyone can come into that house and do whatever they want because they'll be on their own. You won't be there to monitor them. Uh, they can do whatever they want. They can get whatever they want. So you just have to make it very difficult for them to get what they want from there if it's not allowed. So this is why you definitely need to think about security when creating a website because it's very public and then on your website users actually add personal information so this includes passwords and email addresses now it's not surprising that people people are not very good at remembering passwords and usernames so they tend to use the same usernames on many websites to avoid doing too much work so if people put their personal information on your website, at least they need a basic amount of security. They should know that their information is at least a little bit safe. Okay, now security involves knowledge and action. So it's not just enough to know uh, what to do, but it's important to actually act on it. Otherwise, uh, knowledge without action is nothing. But first of all, you have to be aware of the security problems that can occur when you have a website. So once you know something, then you can act on it because you can't act on something you don't know. So knowledge is important and action as well is important. But you must remember that it takes many years to be an expert. So don't expect to be a security wizard just by taking this course. It takes practice because you need to actually have uh, real world experience because hackers they evolve they are people you know they are not machines they evolve over time so when we capture one uh, security problem uh, then they move to the next one so it's a game of cat and mouse it never really gets to the destination because the moment you think your website is secure another vulnerable spot will come up and then hackers will take advantage of that this is why it's important to update to the latest stable version of your software because the previous ones usually have security flaws that have been seen and now have been fixed in the new version. So like I said, it's an ongoing process. So you learn, uh, which is knowledge, and then you act on it like that. So this is uh, how things go. Okay, so the thing is, there is no absolute security. I think I've mentioned this before. So you can keep adding security features to your website to infinity and you still won't be completely secure. So it's very important to strike a balance between security and obstructing your real users. Because if you add too many blockages, too many features in your security system, you may block users that really want to use your system. In that case, they're just going to get frustrated and then they're going to move on to another service. So be careful when you're making uh, security changes like this. An example I could give is a denial of service. Let's say, for example, you have a uh, uh, security feature where if somebody tries their password three or four times you lock them out you lock that account out okay it sounds like a reasonable thing to do but if you think about it if let's say you're running a an auction website where people have to bid and those are time sensitive events 
So if, for example, I have a competitor that I don't want to bid, all I have to do is to know his email address and then go to his, uh, go to a browser and try to log in into his account using that email that I know. Obviously, I don't know the password. So I'll just keep trying random passwords until the account is locked out. Then the person cannot bid. Then I can open my own account and actually bid. That way I have inconvenienced the other guy using a what is known as a denial of service attack. So to prevent such things, instead of closing an account, you might rather consider closing an IP address to your website because that way you close out the person trying to log in and not the account. You ban them for, you don't ban them forever, just ban them for a specific amount of time because also when they're trying to recover their passwords, there's a possibility that it's not them, but it's a hacker trying to uh, retrieve a password. Maybe the hacker just went to their uh, page, to their account, and tried to log in intentionally to uh, block it so that we, they can go through the recovery process, which is very vulnerable uh, because we are adding a new password there. So just things to think about. And there's a famous quote here for computers and say, which says, the only truly secure system is one that is powered off, cast into a block of concrete and put in a sealed room with armed guards, put underground in a sealed room with armed guards. But even that computer may not actually be secure. So this is just to illustrate the difficulty of securing a computer system to an absolute uh, certainty. So just keep in mind that you cannot do that, but you have to just try your level best. And then as problems arise in your system, you can prevent them next time. So if somebody hacks into your system and you figure it out, then you improve your security just like that. Just don't go crazy to a point where you inconvenience your real users. So hopefully uh, that illustrates what security is and what we are up against here. So I will see you in the next video.